Back now at 748 with the latest discoveries that have some scientists asking if it is possible to live forever. NBC's Michelle Kaczynski is here with the tales. Hey, Michelle, good morning. Hi, good morning, Anne. You know, you talk to some of these top researchers, microbiologists, molecular geneticists, and it's almost hard to believe that what they're saying is real and not science fiction, that there's this growing community of scientists that sees aging as not necessarily an inevitability, but a problem that they believe can be fixed. In science labs around the world, right now, the race is heating up to reverse human aging. You heard right, not slow it down or fix it up, but turn it around by things like regenerating tissues and organs, using stem cells, computers. There's a printer that makes blood vessels, mice that regrow intestines. What really excites me is that I'm working on the, the world's biggest, oldest problem. So you think there's someone alive today who could live thousands so, of years? Right, exactly. I don't think there's any limit. There's nothing that would stop people intrinsically from living thousands of years. At thousand-year-old Cambridge University, where back then people rarely lived past their 20s, scientist Aubrey de Grey is spearheading research, gathering experts to end aging. He sees it not at all as a necessity, but a problem, a buildup of damage and gunk in our cells. He just isolated an enzyme in bacteria that fixes that and might work in human cells too. Because when we get these therapies, the world is going to be very different. There are all kinds of ideas out there. Implanted computer chips to operate mechanical body parts. Here, why don't you take these? And a supplement created by American molecular geneticist Bill Andrews that he says slows the shortening of our chromosome tips, or telomeres, which is believed to be a main reason why we age. I think the main reason I want to live forever is it's fun to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Inspired by his dad, who challenged him as a child to become a doctor and cure aging. The literature tells us that it's, I would say, 95% certain or better that if we can find ways to lengthen the telomeres, we are going to reverse aging. There are some doubters, but those on the front lines believe real breakthroughs in lifespan are possible soon. Sonia Arison wrote a book on how society will change when we start living to 100 or 200,000. If you know you have a thousand years to live, you might eat even more potato chips on the couch. You might. <laughs> the idea of having a longer health span actually gives you more opportunity to try new things and be more adventurous. These scientists are pushing their mortal minds to the limit. Will you hurry up? <laughs> I promised that I would reach 150. Do as they put it, cure aging or die trying. And it's not just about extending lifespan, it's about extending health. And it's funny to hear them talk about this as if it was a car, that if you keep replacing the parts, theoretically, it could last forever. But, you know, this research is in the very early stages. There's not a lot of funding, and no human has ever lived past 125. 125 is pretty good, but, boy, wouldn't it be something not to live further? What would we do with our time? What's your definition of soon here, that they're going to yeah. come up with this stuff? Is this going to help me? 20 years? Wow, it could help you. They're serious. Right on the area. Yeah, you're going to live forever as a 70-year-old. How about that? Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Not bad.